Well, good morning. Today is Groundhog Day. Is Groundhog Day. Is Groundhog Day. Morning, Ben. Hey, buddy. Anyways, I don't, I don't really know if Groundhog Day carries the same significance in Canada as it does down in the U.S. I mean, here we talk about six weeks of winter. <laughs> That's child's play. You know, you really think winter's going to end in the uh, middle of March? <laughs> Not going to happen. We'll get maybe a break in the weather. We might get a Chinook blow through for five or six hours. And then we're going to get it again. And as you can see right now, look at the truck. We got six to eight inches of snow last night. It's still currently snowing. We were supposed to get two to four inches of snow, but like a trip to Costco, while you're here, you might as well get a little extra, right? Anyway, it's being Groundhog Day, and on the theme of uh, repetition and uh, history repeating itself, let's talk a little bit about pigs. So yesterday we took our pigs into the butcher in Grand Prairie at H&M Meats, and uh, it's always a really good time to recap what we learned, what we do differently. When I say do differently, <coughs> I'm talking about, I, I would say if, but the reality is when, because I know next year I'm probably going to try and do this again, or I shouldn't say next year, it's probably later this year. I want to do this again. Um, we intended to get two pigs, uh, but we also decided to raise a few pigs uh, for some of our family members. So long story short, we ended up with five pigs. Now we're equipped to manage and handle the two pigs. So the five was a little bit more work than, uh, than I was really ready and without any upscaling of infrastructure to accommodate the extra pigs. But they made out okay. Uh, it just made for more, more feed, uh, a little bit more labor. Uh, speaking of more feed, so we get all our grain from Bloom Enterprises. So they mixed up uh, a hog feed mix. I think it's peas, oats, barley. Uh, there might've been some wheat in there as well. And each pig ate around about 2,000 pounds of grain. So one mini bulk bag, essentially, per pig over, over the course of six months. So that's about $300. So packing grain to them twice a day. Um, we did notice, obviously, when it was a little bit warmer, it was easier to pack them soaked feed, and that would reduce the amount of water we'd have to pack to them. Uh, <laughs> and packing water was the bane of my existence for, for the longest time. Uh, in the summer, it wasn't too bad because we could run a garden hose out there uh, for a while, we even had like a mobile, like a little tank on a trailer that we could just a couple times a day fill up their bucket. We never went with a nipple style water in a big barrel. I was really concerned that they might root around it and tip it over. Uh, obviously have a huge mess or subsequently, you know, we're, we're talking six months in Canada uh, on either end of that spectrum. For sure, you're going to get some seriously cold weather and it's quite likely you might get some in the middle as well. So we didn't go with the nipple water just because I didn't want to have to deal with the freezing issues and the mess and all that stuff. So I resolved that we're going to pack all this water. If we were to do this again, uh, I'd probably be trying to look at a fixed water heated and, and a platform in front of it so that they couldn't, you know, fart around and dig and, and root and make a big stinking mess. So the other thing with feeding. So Initially, we had uh, like a bulk feeder. Really, it was just a creep feeder for lambs that we had set up there. And that worked really well for the first two and a half to three months. But after that, the pigs got so big that they would just root around in there and they would tip it over. And then it would rain or it would snow or whatever happened. And moisture would get into that feeder and then, and then the, the grain wouldn't drop down. So it wasn't working very well at all. And obviously, they know there's grain in there. But if it's not dropping down, they're just going to tip and tumble and screw around with that thing. So that creep feeder is actually gonna need some TLC here in the spring when our lambs are born. I'm gonna to have to uh, bring it at the shop and do some fixing on it. So that's something else to consider is, is what do you have for a bulk feeder for them that uh, you know can stay out of the elements that they can, they can you know get in there, eat what they wanna eat, hopefully not waste as much because that was the one that was the one issue we had is that they're very sloppy eaters and there was lots of grain that went on the ground lots of grain that went into the bellies of magpies ravens and probably a whole lot of mice all right so let's talk about the elephant in the room the unfinished greenhouse a bunch of you have noticed that this hasn't really gone anywhere we haven't done anything with it in a couple of weeks if you maybe recall the tin that we'd ordered for the sides and for the roof actually got damaged at the lumber yard in a windstorm. 
so here it sits. We had to wait for the tin to uh, get reordered and it hasn't arrived yet. I'm hoping today or maybe even tomorrow we get word that it's coming on the truck. Because the weather's so stinky outside, you know, it's a perfect time for it to arrive. Maybe you can work on this in the evenings and then get it and then get it drug out of here and we can get some more space to work on some some realistic projects. I know for the longest time I've been saying that when this is done, I'm gonna work on chicken tractors. The chicken tractor design is critical because like if it's in my head, I really haven't drawn it anywhere. So I don't, I don't wanna forget what the design is. But we're not gonna get chickens until uh, probably the 28th or 29th of April, which reminds me, I do need to reorder chickens today. We ordered chickens months back, uh, had them confirmed and then they came back and said, actually no, we're changing our pricing uh, and don't order again until February because all this things are gonna, availability, everything's gonna be affected. But I really wanna get ahead of the game because last year, those, anybody that ordered late, you'll know, huh, good luck finding chickens, right? So we don't wanna be in that boat. So it's actually today I will go on to Miller Hatchery's website and reorder chickens. But yeah, chicken tractors is probably, it's not gonna take a back burner, it's gonna take a, a side burner, I guess. Um, the, one of the things I've really been thinking of is is a, is a better hay feeder for the sheep. We've tried a couple of different options, like cattle panels wrapped around a bale. Um, we had we had one sheep got its head stuck in there all the time, so that was really inconvenient. Uh, what else did we try? Hog panels that didn't work. Now we've got like actual like fence panels, like the big one inch and a quarter thick panels set up around, and then I got a pallet on one side that slides back and forth. But uh, a week ago, we still had a sheep get stuck in there and break its leg. Uh, well, I think that's what happened. I, I, you know, I wasn't there to see it, but that's the only reasonable explanation. So I'm going to try and build a V-style feeder that the round bale can sit into and then kind of come underneath and just chew from the bottom. Hopefully reduce wastage. Obviously can't promise that. That's one of the biggest challenges I think we face with sheep is that they are very selective eaters. And when it comes to eating hay, they will bury their head in a bale and try and snake their way through it to get the tastiest little morsel as opposed to just eating what's in front of them. And what's in front of them more often than not just gets dropped on the ground. All right, so Environment Canada have finally issued a snowfall warning saying that we could get 10 to 20 centimeters of snow. Well, we had that by six o'clock this morning. So I don't know, it's still giving her. It's. Uh, making up for lost time, I suppose. Anyways, that's fine. It is what it is. It's all we get to deal with. Bevan Taves from uh, Emerson Trail Building Supplies just called, left me a message, and said that our tin has arrived. So that was really good time. And I was just talking about that earlier. So with the truck fired up, I'm gonna hook onto the trailer and rip over there. He's just two miles down the road. Get that loaded up and brought back. So we got all the tin back on the trailer and uh, Bevan was even kind enough. The stuff that wrapped itself around a tree tried to straighten it out and uh, he's given that to us for free so we'll have a look at that see if there's anything we can use it for you know some small project here or there we can use a short piece of tin or whatever but I think I'll come back to this later this evening after Charlotte goes to bed see if we can't unpack this stuff and get it right into All the right, shop. So I just came back in from the chicken house we got 32 eggs again today so that's a pretty good haul pretty happy with that why is that significant well the chickens haven't really left the chicken house in a couple of days the hatch has been open. Well, today it wasn't open. The hatch was open yesterday, but they made the choice not to move. Uh, and we knew the temperature was going to get really, really cold and lots of snow today. So we shut the hatch door and we're looking at a long range forecast, two weeks of probably, you know, not a single, you know, nice day in sight. So it's going to be brutally, brutally cold. We're looking to be on the, on the bottom side of minus 30 for a few nights there. So we're gonna keep everything buttoned up. So I'm just gonna run over with the side-by-side -side right now, and grab a fresh bag of wood chips, uh, because if they're not going outside to poop, uh, or they're not going outside to eat snow, or you know, they're getting all their water from inside the coop, they're not getting outside at all, all the humidity that's gonna be in there uh, could contribute to a hot mess, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna go grab those wood chips right now, and dump it so in might there. be wondering if we're concerned about the big cold spell that's coming well in actual fact no i we've been prepared for this since october winter just never came so we've had all this stuff you know 
basically preloaded, ready to go. Things like the no-freeze chicken water, we've had our deep bedding system firing on all cylinders. We've got our coop well insulated and, and we've got enough birds per square foot inside our chicken house that really we can weather the storm if it was a month. It didn't have to be two weeks. It could be a month, it could be two months and, and we'd be good. So, I mean, I say that now when it actually gets to minus 30 and, uh, and the water's froze and the power goes out and all this whole thing goes completely sideways. I might change my mind, but for now, it's looking like, uh, it's looking like we got it figured out. Anyway, speaking of figured out, I was contemplating this evening actually uh, open up the big shop door and dragging the tin in off the trailer, but it still hasn't quit snowing. And so ain't nobody got time for that. What I do have time for is a cup of tea. So as you know, Karma picked me up some tea the other day. Yeah, she must love me, I guess. So I'm gonna go inside and fix up a cup and maybe just stay warm for one evening. So I'll let you go for now. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.